César Cruz empuja un sueño de paz por las calles de una de las ciudades más violentas de Estados Unidos. We call on all communities to come out. We have done nothing violently. We have fought on a hunger strike for 13 days. Be with us. In all, police took away five hunger strikers and two of their supporters. Although university officials are disappointed the deal was broken, they're pleased no one suffered serious harm during the hunger strike. They also vow to do what they can to encourage diversity. The CI is going to continue working to developing new programs and new initiatives that will assure that our students represent the rich diversity of the state of California. The protest over affirmative action will not end here at UCI. In fact, demonstrators are taking their protest on the road. Tuesday morning, they show up on the Capitol steps in Sacramento. for the young for the young children to understand that it is important that their education is valuable and that they need to fight for something that they believe in the group is prepared for the long journey they've stocked up on cases and cases of supplies some donated by local businesses some purchased with money raised at bake sales the rv will follow the marchers the entire way we want so many people feel empowered now that it's not about being afraid of our government is that we as a people are coming together we're also taxpayers and we demand that everyone have an equal education by friday april 16th the group hopes to arrive in sacramento to meet up with other supporters at a rally on the capitol steps we hope to make a big difference San Pablo is like across the bay of San Francisco. Our schools really are, are in need badly. If an earthquake happens here, they're not safe. We need more textbooks for our school because we can't learn without them. There was like no toilet paper and no water, you know, for your hands. So why does their public school look like it's about to fall apart? And, you know, we're wondering why that is, because supposedly everybody is supposed to be equal, you know? Everybody has equal rights here. That's when they were able to see with their own eyes, this is unjust, this is unfair. So one kid started talking to another kid, and then there started to be conversations out in the classroom, out on the playground, and kids were like, what if we come together? So we had a huge meeting in the auditorium, and then the idea of the march came about. The March for Education was a 70-mile march all the way to the state capitol in Sacramento. We're marching 70 miles to bring attention to the fact that the schools in our district are not equal to the schools throughout the rest of the state. The march started when we were in our spring break. Kids make the choice. I'm not gonna be watching TV or playing video games during my spring break. I'm gonna march about 12 miles a day. That's the choice the kids made. They convinced their parents this is something that was within their rights. Everybody has a right to be heard. That's why we were marching. I was leading the slogans. What do we want? Education. When do we want it? Now. Everybody around was cheering, cheers, talking about the problems in their community. Some people came out of their houses just to march at least one mile. And so we were passing the bridge, and people under the freeway, they were honking at us. 
telling you, you know, we believe what you're doing is right, so keep on doing it. That's when I felt like really I was making a difference. I think marching in the group was an effective way to show people that not only one person thinks that we need our education. Once a student finds out there's an injustice, yes, you have rights. You have the right to protest. You have the right to speak out. But you also have a responsibility to speak out and to do it in a way that's going to bring people together. You should also show what you think, not keep it to yourself because then later on you might be complaining and it might be also be your fault because you didn't say something. Podíamos hacer algo por nuestra comunidad. And they did see changes. So that now the local elementary school is gonna get changed, it's gonna get renovated. The March minute changed my life because my voice could be heard. Deadline comes after weeks of marches by activists trying to draw awareness to the district's crisis. Governor Schwarzenegger didn't even meet demonstrators when they showed up on his doorstep. We understand they have a long history of, of um, financial difficulties, but we think that the best way to approach this is to come up with a comprehensive plan that would get the district back on track financially. But that's not good enough for many in this community who are now preparing for a hunger strike. They say drastic circumstances call for drastic measures. This is serious, and we cannot live in a society where they're cutting back everything to our educational system. We have to take a stand, and if it means starving ourselves, if it means possibly even dying, then that's a stance we have to take. The sports program needs $400,000. At this point, they only have $196,000. Also, the libraries in this district are in jeopardy. They need $1.5 million. At this point, $387,000 have been raised. The deadline for today for that $400,000 for the sports program is not negotiable. The state says that this district needs to figure out are they going to be in the sports program or not because they need to figure out scheduling for next year district urging all parents to do what you can today to help save these programs. Live in San Pablo, Lisa Beckett, NBC 11 News. Thanks a lot, Lisa. And we heard a moment ago from Cesar Cruz. He's a former teacher who is part of the group that marched from San Pablo all the way to Sacramento, now planning that hunger strike. Joins us live this morning from our San Francisco newsroom. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Why the hunger strike? Like, uh, it seems like for many people a pretty drastic step. Well, I think as we were looking over the California budget, there have been reallocated $5.7 billion to prison spending. And Proposition 98, which is funding that goes directly to schools, has been reduced by $2 billion. So when they tell us that we're in, in, in an economic crisis, but there's plenty of money for prison, we realize this is serious. And this is a crime to our humanity and a crime to education throughout the entire state. And this happens to be the 50-year anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education. So we feel like 50 years later, not only is California still separate, but it's still unequal in terms of its educational opportunities for young people. So it is a drastic step, and none of us want to die, but we feel like we need to engage in this hunger strike and call upon the state and national consciousness to really make a change to education. It, it's slated to begin May 3rd. Can you talk about exactly how you have it planned, who might take part in it, and how it might help the situation? There are five individuals, three students that are over the age of 18 that want a hunger strike. Some of them are from UC Berkeley. We have one mother that is going to hunger strike and myself as a community organizer. There's five of us. We are looking possibly to do the hunger strike in the city of Richmond or San Pablo. And we're starting May 3rd. We feel that if we can go an entire at least 14 days without eating, we'll reach May 17th, which is a 50-year anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education. And we have to call upon the nation to make changes to our educational system. We cannot live in a society where there's no libraries in the schools, where there's no counselors, where there's no psychologists. We have to change that. I know that you went on the uh, march, and, and then when you got there, hoped to talk to the governor. That didn't pan out. We'll see drastic uh, steps being taken, but Cesar uh, Cruz, thank you for uh, your time this morning. We appreciate it. Strikers began in the East Bay, and they have since moved to Sacramento, closer to the man who is the object of their protest, but he still has not heard their message. Channel 2's Sarah Seidner reports. On the south side lawn of the state capitol, three people sit exhausted and malnourished. They are on the 22nd day of their hunger strike for education. They say they've had nothing but water and Pedialyte, a drink that replenishes electrolytes. 
people think that this fast is really drastic, but where we come from, losing libraries and counselors and psychologists is drastic. On May 10th, nine people began to fast to protest budget cuts to education and to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Brown versus Board of Education, the Supreme Court decision that struck down the notion of separate but equal schools. The protesters say racial and economic equality in education is still not a reality, and that's why they're here. Six of the hunger strikers stopped the fast for medical reasons. I was in the danger zone after 16 days. But they come back to show their support when they can. The fasters are demanding more and equal funding for school districts and a promise from the state to forgive the debt racked up by the West Contra Costa Unified School District. The district is in such dire straits that it stands ready to eliminate all sports, libraries, and music programs for students. I just want them to know that, that we care for them and that's why we're doing this and to keep their spirits high and try as hard as they can, even though they, we have to work two, three, four, five times as much. The three hunger strikers have lost more than 50 pounds among them, and they have become too weak to walk. Yet they can still muster anger towards Governor Schwarzenegger for not meeting their demands or meeting with them in person. At one point, he was 100 feet away from us and could not bother to walk 100 more steps to to greet us. We're on our 22nd day. Our demands still haven't been met. Um, so I've just been praying for them to hopefully step it up. The governor's staff has, however, come out to talk with the strikers, and so do supporters and those who are just curious about the signs. But not everyone agrees that funding guarantees an equal education. The funding for education, I always believe it goes back to the home. I mean, it doesn't matter whether or not the school provides. Kids will always do what, how they, what they've been raised to do. So for me, I don't necessarily agree with what they say as far as getting counselors and all that, because it all goes back to the home. While the hunger strikers are left with little to no energy, their supporters are trying to fill the energy gap, some with tribal dance, others with kind words. On Thursday, they will all converge on the Capitol, trying to get a meeting with Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. In Sacramento, Sarah Seidner, KTVU, Channel 2 News. Gracias. Buenas noches, maestros y estudiantes. Fueron recibidos por el gobernador del estado, quien les dijo que les va a regresar un poco de lo mucho que les ha quitado a los distritos escolares. Estudiantes y maestros por defender el presupuesto para las escuelas del distrito de West Contra Costa comenzó con una marcha a Sacramento, llevándole un claro mensaje al gobernador, pero sin obtener respuestas. Primero marchamos 70 millas desde la ciudad de San Pablo a Sacramento y marchamos con casi 70 niños. Llegamos al Capitolio porque ha habido tantos recortes al sistema educativo. Al no ser atendidos ni escuchados por el mandatario estatal en sus exigencias por evitar recortes presupuestales que afectaran escuelas, un grupo de estudiantes se apostó frente al edificio estatal de Oakland en huelga de hambre porque, dijeron, era la forma de tener una respuesta inmediata. Pues una huelga de hambre no nomás es algo político, pero es también algo, un movimiento espiritual. Entonces queríamos llegarle a la conciencia del gobernador y los legisladores. Y lo consiguieron. Después de 26 días de permanecer en huelga de hambre, el gobernador Schwarzenegger les hizo saber a los huelguistas que destinará un presupuesto que refinanciará de inmediato la tasa de interés de un préstamo estatal al distrito de West Contra Costa. Esto quiere decir que con dicha decisión se regresarán 600 mil dólares cada año al distrito escolar de Contra Costa. Una victoria señalan de esfuerzo conjunto que beneficiará a la comunidad estudiantil. Y gracias a la ayuda de Dolores Huerta y tanta gente de la comunidad, en el día 25 llegamos a un gran acuerdo con el gobernador y pues ha sido una gran victoria para nuestra comunidad. Así es una victoria, una victoria que se logró el día de ayer allí en el Capitolio, en la capital del estado. Ellos dicen que ojalá que esta medida sirva de ejemplo para que otros distritos escolares hagan lo mismo y también para seguirle pidiendo al gobernador del estado que le regrese los fondos que hacen posible la educación a lo que todo niño tiene derecho. Es mi reporte en vivo desde el Centro de Satélites.
I think American education is doing fine and well. I think American education was created to have loyal patriotic sponges. I, I don't think there's a crisis in American education. In a tough East Oakland neighborhood where gang violence is a part of life, there is hope. Come and join us for the dinner. Old rivals cook up new friendships under Cesar Cruz, co-founder of the Homies Empowerment Program. It's really hard to kill someone when you know them. Y'all ready? Cesar invites sworn enemies to cook and eat side by side every Wednesday night at the YMCA on 45th Avenue. Afterward, there's food for thought, a message of peace. You can be a peaceful gang member. You can be someone who takes care of the community. Take Adrian Arias and Nesta Ramirez. They live in rival neighborhoods, but discover they can find common ground. They share the grief gang violence can bring. We could relate like the things that we go through, but in a different way, you know. They're going to go through the same pain that we go through, and it's, it's all the same thing, you know. We're just going back at each other, and it's never going to stop unless we stop ourselves. Cesar knows the vicious cycle. Before he became an educator, he grew up in a broken home and got in trouble with the law. He that. felt compelled to help start the Homies Empowerment Program the two years ago at the East Bay YMCA, where he's on staff. I average about six to ten funerals a year that I attend. Most are open casket. I'm tired of it. Today, he oversees more than 200 young people in the program who are in gangs or influenced by gangs. The president of the East Bay YMCA praises Cesar's leadership. He has the uh, passion and urgency of an activist, the knowledge and nurture of a teacher, and the skills and psychological appropriateness and modalities of a developmental psychologist. He's come out in a lot of movies about Norteños and gangs. Cesar also teaches Latino history, not only at Homies Empowerment meetings, but also at a Rise High School in Oakland. And what happens when I don't meet someone else's expectations? Students say learning about Latino history for the very first time helps them dream big. After you know that your race also has heroes, just like every other race, then it, it motivates you and you know that it's possible. And many students say Cesar is one of their heroes for making peace a reality. Peace is happening in Oakland and it's not just the stories of murder and violence. That's not the only thing happening in Oakland. For helping Oakland's rival gang members take steps toward peaceful and productive lives, this week's Jefferson Award in the Bay Area goes to Cesar Cruz. Sharon Chin, CBS 5. My name is Jasmine Preciado. I am Cesar's wife. You can't put in words how proud I am. Harvard is, is so known throughout, you know, internationally. So it's a new program. It's only three years old. It's called a doctorate in educational leadership. They only accept 25 people a year. For me, I just feel extremely honored that they've never had a Mexican immigrant male in the program. It just means a lot to our people, to our family, to my students, because it's like, oh, well, my teacher's going to Harvard. Well, my name is Cesar Cruz. I'm the co-founder of the Homies Empowerment Program. Uh, uh, it's a program here in Oakland, California, an independent organization. I'm also the dean of students at Arise High School. 
a lot of our people come from come from kinships and tribal societies where we're united we're a community not this individualistic Horatio Alger survival of the fittest one person at the top no communities he actually is a motivation and he's like my I'd say my hero can I can I brag about your book what we're working on is we're working on a book and so what they're doing is they're peer editing. I want to celebrate their voice. So they're working on their bios, their stories, their journal, and we're calling it Youth Wisdom. As cheesy as this looks, I'll end with this. There's some hidden gifts that we've been given. Every single one of us have. Imagine when young people find their hidden gifts. When they look at their past, go through the process of healing and see it differently, man, a new world is possible. That's what we try to teach young people. This particular class, as hard as it's been, is my last class after 19 years. And I feel a duty to them to impart whatever I can, to leave whatever I can, and then they got to carry it out. I feel so good because my dad um, is going to Harvard. I'm going to be going to school there. I've been your wetback and beaner, deportable, deportable. A scapegoat. scapegoat. I've been your gardener, gardener cook, cook, nanny, nanny and farm, farm worker. worker. I am though a thinker, complex, splicing, Spanish, Nahuatl, English, and languages undefined. I've been boxed into geography, geography color, color, identity. I am though boundless. You've called me Latino, Latino Taino, Taino, Mestizo, Mestizo indigena. indigena. I call myself human. 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 suffering from undiagnosed post-traumatic stress disorder. Franz Fanon talked about it as a rubber band ready to snap. And we have a lot of rubber bands ready to snap. And in our neighborhood, we knew how to dodge bullets. But we were less skilled in dodging emotional drive-bys. What happens when my father says I'm useless? Or the community says there's no resources for you, or you're called stupid, or fat, or ugly, or dumb, or worthless, or bitch, or dyke, or fag, or nigger, or wetback, or illegal alien, or chick. What happens when that gets called on all of our people all the time? It is demoralizing. And so today at the Alumni of Color Conference, I have so much hope because you're in the room, these young people are in the room, and I don't think Homies Empowerment can make this change, but I believe this Adelante family, it just simply means family moving forward. We need to learn from our young elders like Laura and Kenny. We need to learn from everybody here in this audience, and I want, I'm pleading that we partner together and that we create innovative change and that we not believe the hype that a new world is not possible, that we not believe that education can be changed, that we not believe that a new world is not possible. Empires have fallen before. The Roman Empire fell. But let's not worry about an empire falling. Let's build a new world for seven generations from now. And I hope you'll continue to listen the way you're listening to me to these next few young people who are so nervous, who've never taken up the mic before, who might be shivering, who are not necessarily poets, who are not necessarily slam artists. They're human beings with hopes and dreams, and they're here to work with you to change the world. Gracias.